Hey, you're Alberts. Kevin here. All right, we have more action from the 2023 Derby City Classic. This is round 12 action. Shane Van Boning versus Robbie Capito. Robbie does have one loss. He, If he loses, he's out. Shane has zero losses. He still has a buyback available. So his tournament life is not on the line here, but this should be a good match. I am being joined by Mark White. Thanks for joining, Mark. How are you doing today? And yeah, thanks for having me again. And it's good to see Shane Van Boning back on the screen once again. Just saw a great match of him against his good buddy and Moscone Cup teammate, Sky Woodward. Sent Sky to the one loss side. And uh, Robbie Capito, as you say, already there. Very good player, Robbie Capito. Boyfriend to Amber Chen, the great player from Chinese Taipei. Canada Open champion she was last year. And Robbie... Although he's from the Philippines, represents Hong Kong now. And that's where he, he lives. So this should be an interesting match. Young Robbie, very attacking, very, very serious about his game. Looking forward to this one. Sky, I nearly said Sky then. Well, I did say Sky. It's Shane to break off. <laughs> First rack, race to nine. Bit of traffic walking across. All right, two ball two in the break. Ball. Yeah, Robbie Capito, he beat uh, Eklund Kachi in the finals for the 2018 WPA World Nine Ball Championship. Yeah, he's a great talent. I've spent a lot of time with Robbie at the various tournaments that I visit around the States. Very serious about his game. Very, very hard worker. He also trains Amber Chen. Very serious guy. I actually met him as well when I was there last year in the 2022 Derby City Classic. I remember I trying to get him to dance, but he didn't want to dance. He's a very shy lad. <laughs> Sorry, Maybe slight correction. Just me, he didn't want to dance with. <laughs> <laughs> slight correction. I said he, but I said he beat Eklund Kachi in the finals. It was not the finals. My bad. No, I didn't have the heart to to chime in and tell you that. <laughs> I'm sure it was during one of the rounds, though. It was uh, it was in the late round, but it wasn't the finals. I think it might have been last sixteen, actually. Here we go then. A little bit of an awkward angle on this four. Gonna have to dodge some traffic to get to the five. Handled it nicely. Threaded it through that gap beautifully. Yeah, awkward angle again. And he's played on this table before, so he should be kind of used to the speed and the, the bounce of the rails. Now in his signature white Louis Vuitton trainers. Hmm. He's got too much money if you spend a thousand dollars on a pair of trainers. <laughs> what do you call them? Sneak sneakers? Do you call them or running yeah. shoes? What do you call them? Yeah, we have multiple names for him. But I agree with you. If you're spending a thousand dollars on them, yeah, you. You got too much money. Send, send some of that money this way. Shane sends a game to his side of the scoreboard with that break and run. Draws first blood. Yeah, 
This is a race to this is a race to nine. This is going to be a winner's option for who breaks. We are racking with the nine on the spot. The one in the front, of course. The two ball can be racked anywhere else except the front or the middle, but it cannot be racked at the back. So you have, well, six options for where you can rack the two ball. Uh, we are breaking from uh, the break box, which is between the first and third diamonds at that end of the table. A little bit bigger than the break box you may have seen in some other tournaments. Uh, no jump cues are allowed. You can jump the ball, but you must use your full playing cue. Uh-oh, scratch on the break. Is everything going to open up, or is it going to get tied up? Eh, well, with ball in hand, it should be okay for Robbie. Yeah, first look at Robbie. And as you said, ball in hand, that too might have been a problem. He's looking at the... Going straight for a look at the combo here, looking for an early... Win. Yeah, you see a lot of players line up like that, and then they'll leave their cue down, and they'll put the cue ball on that line. And now you just play a straight shot, hit the the two ball full in the face. So imagine a ghost ball in front of the the two ball, and just hit straight onto the two. And the nine should come in this bottom right hand corner. Ooh. Just like that. <laughs> Thought about it. It almost hung up. So a very quick win there. And that just shows you another danger of scratching on the break. Because you never know where the lowest ball is going to end up. And if it goes close to the nine like it did there, it can be a very, very expensive scratch. And a very quick one as well. And there's nothing like getting a nice quick rack to give you that little bit of boost of confidence. Can be a little disheartening for your opponent too. It's like, you know, you worked real hard to win your game and then your opponent just has to make one shot to win their game. All right, Robbie with the break. Looking to make the one in the side. And he does. Now then, is that two ball? He's got to look at it. And that's all you can wish for. He does have an easy safety if he wants to if he wants to try to play safe here. He can bank that two ball right up the middle of the table. He's got a lot of balls he can hide the cue ball behind. Yeah, not much chance of getting on the three, so I'm pretty no. sure we'll see him play exactly that shot you just said. Try and get that cue ball tight in behind the three, cut off the one rail escape. Well, that's okay. Behind four balls. I think the one rail is on, though, and this is why it's so important to get that cue ball stuck up tight behind the snookering ball because there you see it, quite a straightforward shot for SVB. And once again, the same problem, Kevin. Can't really get to the three. Except I don't think he can play the same safety this time. I think we have to go the other way. Cue ball like behind that five ball up table. Yeah, same result. Once again, quite a straightforward kick. Mike come past the three ball here and kick it from behind and Robbie could find himself in trouble here yeah caught it a bit thin so our first real look now at Robbie 
an open table before we saw him just make quite a straightforward 2-9 combo. This is a bit of a test now, though, to run these balls out. Yeah, the 3 does not pass the 7, so he's probably going to have to draw, like, cue ball towards this bottom right corner for the 3, possibly on the same side as the 2. Yeah, I mean, if he wants to be really adventurous, you know, play for the gap between those two balls either side of the three. Maybe even carry him into one of them. Doesn't look like he's going very low, though. No, he's not. Played the percentage shot. A little bit unlucky to be bridging over a ball. Still making favourite to make this though. Four ball waiting nearby. Again, the wrong side of this. He does have work to do if he's to leave himself a shot. Yeah, it looks like if he shoots this with... Yeah, I was just going to say, if he shoots this with a high ball, he's going to be going right into the six. So he's... Yeah. Got some work to do. And he just oh, brushed he off the, the six. six. Yeah, it was That's nicely nice. judged, wasn't it? Yes, nice touch. Now he's got all that tough stuff out of the way from here. Looks pretty smooth sailing. He's had to work for it. Wasn't a straightforward layout. I'm sure Shane thought he might get back to the table, but he won't. No, he's picked something. his way through this quite it's nicely. Ca something catastrophic has got to happen for him <laughs> not to get out here. And it's going to be Capito who is competing very well. Oh, having said that, he's finished a little bit short on that. He'll handle it, though. Yeah, young eyes see the, the prize there, the edge of the nine ball, no problem. And this man, I know him a little bit, and he's not the type of guy who, you know, fears anybody, really. He's a very, very confident young guy. I believe he's 21 years old. And he knows where he wants to be. And he's already reached one final in one of the Pro Billiard Series events. I believe it was Aloysius Yap that beat him in the final of that in, I think it was Michigan, when Aloysius became only the second person to retain one of those titles. Fedor Gorse did it in Arizona, Aloysius Yap did it in Michigan. I like uh, Aloysius, I like his attitude, he has a, he has a nice attitude. Yeah, lovely man. Rose to fame, of course, against the man that Robbie is playing now, SVB. In that did he or didn't he call the extension? Right, yeah. A little bit of controversy. Elisa just said, I don't care, let's just play. Yeah. And that really does sum the guy up. I mean, he's just a lovely fella. Another guy who's settled down now. Got himself a, a lovely girlfriend Aloysius has. Silviana Lou from Indonesia. So nice break there for Robbie. Wide open spread. Good look at the one to start. This could be trouble for Shane.
Yeah, this guy can run packs, believe me. So much talent. And I've actually just noticed something. He's now using carbon fibre. Oh, is that, is that new for him? him? Yeah, he was using wood the last time I saw him. Oh, it's come up a little short there. Yeah, and it's quite bizarre, actually, because I was watching a match last night and they were talking about the difference between wood and carbon, and it was exactly that shot that they use an example where it's much easier to play that stun out when you've not got much angle with a carbon fibre shaft rather than it is with a wood shaft. That was the, the commentator's comment at the time. And uh, it's quite funny that that's just come up as I was talking about carbon fibre. I honestly think that there's more feeling with wood. And I would rather play that shot with wood than carbon fibre. For that exact reason where you don't really feel the shot so much. Our carbon fibre loving viewers will be shouting at their screens now saying, <laughs> Shut up Mark, you don't know what you're talking about. You're an old dinosaur with your, with your maple shaft. He's a little bit out of position here on this five. Needs to come with a good shot here. Would hate to fail with just four balls remaining. Yeah, I too am a dinosaur. I still play with the wood shaft. Well, at least I did last time I played. It's been a while since I played. I seem to remember you play with a, a Kevin Ross cue. That is correct. As does my wife. I might be a dinosaur, but the Alzheimer's hasn't hasn't cut in you just yet, Kevin. Don't worry. Oh, a nice shot. Center of the pocket. Perfectly back in line for the sick. Nicely done. Yeah, he's a good shot maker. Yeah, I used to be able to make those when I was 21. It's a dangerous recipe, what Capito's got. He's got good technique. He's got loads of ambition, plenty of talent, and a great work ethic. And put all those things together. I mean, add to that, his great temperament. I mean, he does get a little bit angry sometimes, but don't we all? Nothing wrong with a bit of passion. It goes. Yeah, we call that passion. <laughs> yeah, and 3-1 against Shane, you know, he'll be feeling good. Still only 49% though, chance of beating him, say the stats at the bottom. That's a bit unfair. Three yeah, Fargrade is, uh, Far is such a pessimist. The guy's leading 3-1 to one and they still don't think he can win. Such a pessimist. Mike Page, Steve Ernst, two guys who I know very well, met them many times, the inventors of Fargo, two super smart guys, you'll often see them round at these tournaments, with a little booth where you go and ask them any questions that you may have on how the Fargo system works. Yep, I've talked to both of them many times, in fact it was Steve that uh, I worked with so I could add that little Fargo 8 calculator to our scoreboard there. Ah, there you go. Yeah, and I made the mistake of saying, why would you call it Fargo? And he said, well, because we're from Fargo. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a place. <laughs> <laughs> of 
Could have been called 49 other things, couldn't it? <laughs> or state-wise, anyway. I'm not saying Fargo's a state. What state is Fargo in, by the way? Um, Listen well, Kevin gets on his <laughs> gets on his Google. <laughs> I can never remember if it's South Dakota or North Dakota. It's one of the Dakotas. I I can never remember. Oh, so it's it's Shane Van Boning country, sort of. Yeah, how good is Robbie looking? Got really nice rhythm around the table. Uh, North Dakota. I knew you'd have your Google out at some stage. How do you think I get all my information about the players? <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to give away those uh, secrets of the trade. Now, are you impressed with this young man, Kevin? Absolutely. In fact, this is not the first time he's been on Railbirds TV. We also have a match with him versus Efren Reyes. It's actually a round one match. You can see that on our channel. I won't say who won, but I will say that uh, Robbie did very well in that match against the GOAT. And this is another player he's playing now who could be called a GOAT at some stage in his career, Shane Van Boning. And he's making light work of him at the moment. This is to go 4-1 up in a race to nine. Get Robbie. It's do or die for him in this match. Shane still has the luxury of a buyback, having not lost. Won 11 rounds. Remarkable. Oh, something distracted him. Yeah, done the wise thing. Somebody just walking past, get up, start again. Make the nine. All right, Fargo Rate finally concedes that uh, maybe Robbie has a chance to win. <laughs> Gone to favourite now. Rightly so, really is playing well. And we've not seen anything from Shane since he scratched on that break, really. So the equipment we are using here today, these are diamond, uh, nine foot diamond smart tables, Simonis cloth, Aramith billiard balls. Uh, we are using the template rack we're using is the AccuRack from Outsville and Master Chalk is the official chalk here at this event. Total control, looking to make that one ball again, and he does. Oh wow, three balls into that same side up. pocket. Wow, that's unbelievable. Can we see that again? Watch this, one ball, two ball, and is that the four ball was it? Yeah, that was the four ball. The one, the two and the four. So it means he's on the three and he's got a look at it. He 
can't make it, but you can certainly get a really good safety in here and put Shane in a lot of trouble. Well, it's okay. Yeah, it's going to be an easy hit for Shane. Yeah, he took the the easy route just to make sure he got cover. Played the percentage shot. Yeah, good Shane has here, a though. good chance to get safe right back at him. He's not going to get safe. Yeah, I think this three ball, just a little snick it in. Just take the paint off it. Five ball next. So it's out in the open. It's got at least four pockets it can go in. And it looks like well, maybe you can play it into the side pocket. That's what I was thinking. If he could find that gap between the six and the nine, that would be lovely. Oh, he has, and he's had a... Well, could have been worse, that's all you can say. Yep, he's got a shot. He's not, uh, he's not snookered. But not an easy shot by any means. The good news is he doesn't have to do much to get position on the six, just to the rail and back out. So that lets him put the majority of his concentration on just pocketing this ball. You we saw him make a similar one. Okay, the balls were further apart before, but it was a similar shot into the other corner pocket. Oh, that's not going to drop. Oh, and it's hung up. Now then, is that the shot that changes this match? Sometimes that's all it takes, isn't it? Just one little miss shot like that could have so easily dropped. So close. Shane back to the table. Quicker than I can get to a buffet. Believe me, <laughs> I'm quick. <laughs> yeah, I can go forward here. Or back. Just a simple stunt off the side route. And all of a sudden, instead of 5-1, it's 4-2 and Shane Van Bonin breaking and he's quite capable of running a few racks himself. How expensive he's, will that five ball be? Yeah, he's been known to uh, string some racks from time to time. Looks like Alex Pegalain up there on that upper left table. A little Alex. And who's he playing? I can't tell. You can tell. <laughs> we it's won't a tell anyone. <laughs> Reminds me of the film Airplane or the movie, as you mm -hmm. call them. So Shane breaking off makes that one in the side. 
two ball two almost balls. follows it in. But hangs around, gives Shane a nice shot. Two to the four. Looks like he has angle on this too. Have to do some type of like stun follow, shoot the four in the same pocket as the two. A little bit of a touchy shot. Yeah, just a little bit awkward. He'd love to just run this through, but I think he's going to run into. Another ball, is it the seven in the way, is it? Is that the four back nearest to this rail, behind yeah. the six? Kevin? Yeah, that's the, yeah, the four ball is the one that's closest to us. Yeah, I think he's worried about hitting the seven with the cue ball. So he tried to stun it over the other side and it's gone wrong. A reprieve then for the the youngster from Hong Kong. He's going to be getting back to the table. Might not like his next shot, but at least it's a shot. Needs this to run though. No, oh, he hasn't got any cover. I think Robbie's happy he's not kicking. Yeah, I mean, he must have been expecting something a little harder than this when he saw Shane shaping up for the safety. Yeah, he was already putting his kicking shoes on, and then he saw, oh, wait, I don't have to put the kicking shoes on. I can put the other shoes back on. Well, I'm sure you had them in America. Back in the 70s and the 80s, we used to have a a make of shoes called Kickers. Quite innovative for their time. And they did make a comeback in the, the 2000s. They would have been perfect, wouldn't they, as a sponsor? <laughs> they could have made shoes for pool players. That would have been great. All right, nice, uh, nice little safety there by Robbie. Okay, good hit by Shane, and all right. Well, Robbie can see the four. He could even cut yeah, this I in if he will. wants to take it on. I think he will, Kevin, because he can play up behind the five ball with the cube ball, and if he makes it, he's on the five. If he doesn't, he might get cover. So it's a kind of a two-way. I think he can just draw past the six. Yeah, he's got to consider this a chance, I think. That's what he's come round to look at now. Look, can he miss the six? To my eye, it doesn't can look he like he can the miss six the six. Four. Looks like he's probably just going to catch the edge of it, which will actually help him get to the five, I think. Excuse me if you can hear some banging in the background, but there's a firework display going on here. I don't know what that's for, but... Celebrations in Thailand. Will there be some celebrations in Hong Kong tonight? Can Robbie Capito <laughs> defeat SVB? Didn't you just have... Didn't you guys over there just have like a two-week-long celebration? Some, some water festival of some kind? We did. It's called Songkran. It's the... The Thai New Year, and it goes on for about two weeks where you're right, they just 
throw water over you. It's a time to stay in if you want to protect your mobile. They actually sell special plastic things to carry your your mobile phones in and your money in during that period. It's a crazy time. You're better off inside. That was a beautiful shot there by Robbie. Perfect on this five. He's even got the six ball out in the better spot. Yeah, it was a brave shot in the end because he went all out for that. And having missed that five in the last rack, it was a brave shot to go for because it could have gone wrong. uses quite a long bridge and quite a lot of cue hanging over from the bridge hand. I don't mind that. I know a lot of players these days are tending to shorten everything up to leave less room for movement. Look straight forward nine, these guys down the rail. And he's over halfway. Should see that percentage go up at the bottom just a little bit. Come on, Mike and Steve, get them points up. And it goes. Yep, Robbie passing the halfway mark, 5 2 in this race to nine. Yeah, I was looking forward to this match. I know how attacking Robbie is, and we saw that on that five ball then Kevin that oh, sorry, was a, the four ball the yeah four that was ball, a yeah. great shot uh, on that four to get to the five coming off the edge of that six beautiful shot well controlled So again, this is round 12 action. Robbie does have one loss. Shane has zero losses. Robbie loses this match. He's out. If Shane loses it, he still has his rebuy available. Yeah, for you Q Sports fans, there's lots and lots on rail birds. There's one pocket. There's lots of nine ball action. There's some artistic pull championships as well where's the cue ball it's in the corner Shane Van Boning here comes another chance for you Yeah, this is not what you want to give Shane. A ball in hand on a nice wide open layout. It's rarely going to end well for you. Yeah, it hasn't got a table time though. Needs to get that arm going again. You mentioned, though, giving ball in hand to a man of Shane's calibre with, you know, with this open layout. Very, very straightforward. Making it look easy. 
that scratch has cost him. He was in control of the match, Robby Capito, but Shane getting one back now, just two behind, 5-3. Familiar sight, Van Boning, USA. How many times has he stood that end of the table and racked balls? Wow. Speaking of racking the balls, where's that two ball? Oh yes, it's at the back where it shouldn't be. Naughty boy, Shane. The City Classic rules state that you're not allowed to Rack the two at the back. Anywhere else? And, wow, look at this break. He's got nice wide open layout again. A shot, good shot at the one to start with. Position to the two shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, I'm guessing if, if your opponent sees the balls racked wrongly, they can say so. Yeah, it's kind of on Robbie to pay attention and notice that, hey, that two ball's not supposed to be there. Yeah, he's normally very, you know, a stippler for the rule, shall we say. Not much gets past Robbie Capito. Robbie does lose this. He's out. Must be... So hard to swallow when you've come through 11 rounds, you're in the 12th round, you're up against Shane Van Boning. you got a chance to go 6-2 up and you scratch on the break. Let Shane back in. And theoretically, Robbie might not get back to the table again. It's a cruel game, Paul. Especially 9-ball. It's definitely within Shane's abilities to run six rack. Yeah, you feel it's only like a bit of bad luck on the break or a scratch on the break that can stop him. If he carries on breaking like that, that could soon become a reality. All right, nice break and run. Yeah, the saying goes that a mistake like that, it's how many racks it's going to cost you, normally minimum of two, which it has done, and could be more. Yeah, look two how the match has changed yeah. around. Look, Kevin, from 6-2, possibility 5-4. Five, 5-4, four. Five, four, and he's at the table racking, getting ready to break. Yeah, worrying times. Ooh, almost the nine ball followed yeah. the one in. Oh, and he's going to have a good shot. I mean, he'll be getting rid of that rack straight away in the way. He's got a nice shot here, low left on the cue ball. Off the side rail, back down towards the three. Can you see any possible banana skins any pitfalls here Kevin uh, three to the four I mean uh, four to the six so once you get past that it's pretty smooth sailing but three to four four to the six could be could be tricky Oof. 
Used all the pocket. Yeah, it wiped its feet, therefore it went in clean. Shane's body language kind of suggests that uh, he does not have a shot at this four. Yeah, hasn't come far enough, has he? He's got a decent safety he can play, though. And maybe even bank it. It looks like he's going straight at it. Maybe holding behind the seven. No, he could make it, no problem. Uh, it's just it was... about where he's going to leave the cue ball. He's left the bank. He's up there with the best when it comes to this type of shot as well. Not a problem. Just a bit of work to do. Could run it round or could draw off this back cushion straight up. He's going high. So four rails here. Watch the cue ball. To catch that fourth rail and get away from it and come towards the eight, it's okay. Oh, you need a big bounce. Need a big bounce. Oh, he's left himself some work to do here. Not quite sure what he was trying there. He was trying to come back up for it into the side. Was he, Kevin? I think he was. Yeah, he was. Just came up a hair short. I think he'll still handle it. Not a problem. Yeah, no problem. Robbie gesticulating. I'm going for a break, I think he just said. Good time to take one because 5-5 five, five should have led 6-2. Instead, all square. Yep, looks like uh, players are on break, so we'll be right back. All right, players are back from break. Here we go, 5-5. Five, five. Didn't make the one, but made a ball in the opposite side pocket. And also the five ball has made it into this bottom right hand corner. So two balls off the break and he will be feeling much more the comfortable player of the two. Robbie. Sudden. Well, how will that affect his confidence? He's normally such a confident guy. When you've got the chance to go 6-2 up and it's 5-5, five, five, it must affect you. That's where you need to regroup. And he's done the right thing going out for a break. Just get his head together, splash a bit of water over your face. And I actually read something about that. Yeah. Kevin, and cold water, they recommend if you you have a, a, a cold shower, it gives you dopamine. It gives you a blast of dopamine. So I'm guessing that cold water on the face, you know, does the same kind of thing. 
just to get that feel good factor back in you again like a fresh start all right is he thinking Shane about just, is he thinking about uh, slicing at this ball i think he might be going behind it to kick and stick it if he can get behind it i may just be playing behind the nine ball just separate the two balls either side of the nine well gap through to this and it's kind of a free shot Shane having a look yeah he can definitely see this one can he avoid the eight and the side pocket is that the eight just to the actually that's the yeah. six by the cue ball Oh uh, no! Sorry, the one by the the one ball. Oh, just that's up the from the one. Oh, that's the four ball. The four ball. Can he avoid the four and get back across? Avoid the side pocket and get a shot at the two. Did a big well, bounce, get past it. that six, get past that six. It did not get past the six. Yeah, such a difficult shot that because he couldn't afford to try it and get up closer to the two because he would have maybe hit the four or scratched in the side. And he managed to miss everything coming three or four times across the table and unfortunately finished right behind that six ball. And it's a little bit unlucky, you've got to say. And he's in trouble here. Yeah, Shane over there in his seat, ready to pounce. Put some pace into this as well. He needs to separate these balls. Oh, good hit. Is he going to get a shot. safe? Is he going to get a safe? Oh, don't line up the nine. Oh, the nine, the one nine carom, is it on? Shane had a glance at it on the way past, but it was nothing more than a glance. Well, he went over there and gave it a second glance. I don't I think, think it's, it's just one of those. I think you can play both. I th you know, I think you can play for the two in the court bottom corner and draw into the, the nine. Who knows? Maybe even end up on the three if you don't make the nine. It's one of those. Just concentrate on making the two ball. The rest, well, whatever happens, happens. If it goes in, it's a bonus. If it doesn't, you've got a shot on the three. Personally, I would just play for the two and just stun into the nine and leave myself on the three. Don't think about anything else, although he's still looking at it. Is he looking at a safety now? This is one of those instances where you wonder what they would have done on a shot clock. Hmm. What would he have played? Camera angles are also deceiving because to my eye it didn't look like the two ball had a pocket. But, you know, camera angles are uh, deceiving. Nice safety. He's got him hooked, I think. Yeah, the fact that he took so long over it, I mean, was an indication, wasn't it, that probably it wasn't on. And he's got a two-rail kick here. Two ball going close to the side pocket. Yeah, he would not mind if the two ball went in the side. Yeah, 
if it slides past he might get cover behind the three if it goes in he's on the three probably like to kick it just before the side pocket well he didn't hit it very hard did he but he's hit it perfectly <laughs> Yeah, that's not a bad kick. He has not left a shot for Shane. He can see the two, but no straight on shot. Yeah, it's very well worked out by Robbie there. Going for the bank, for and the that bank. looks in. Oh, what a oh, shot. It yeah, it's such a great shot to have in your armory, isn't it, that? I mean, I'm not a great banker, so I rarely look for them. But it really can get you out of some situations sometimes. Difficult safety to play, which is why he went for the bank. Yeah, it was and a bit of a two-way shot, too. To take the lead. Oh! Wow. Oh, he's got away with it, though. I'm sure Robbie will be pleased just to get back to the table, though. Yeah, and Shane really hasn't looked on great form in this particular match. He's never really got going, never really got flowing. For a little bit of context, uh this match started at 3.30 in the morning. Wow. After a full day of playing. Yeah, that then explains a lot. I would certainly have chosen my words differently had I have known <laughs> that fact earlier on. Overcut it intentionally, just wanted to err on the side of caution as well. Very, very critical part of the match. This now, and I'm sure both players just want to get to bed, but they've got some. Well, you've come this far, you don't want to go out at this stage. Shane, of course, still has the luxury of the buyback, remember, but it's the end of the line for Robbie should he lose this one. Did not work out. Yeah, the gap's there, but I remember last time Shane had a shot at this three. He's been spending too much time in the Philippines. Do you see what he's doing with his hand now in those pockets? <laughs> it's a very, very Filipino trait, that one. Picking up some of their habits. Yeah. It's rubbing off. Hmm. All right, he's not missing yeah, that three luckily. ball twice in a row. Beautiful stroke. Looks effortless. Yeah, when he's on, he really makes it look easy. Which I guess you could say that for most any player. Yeah, the easier it looks, the harder they're working, believe it or not. It's like a duck gliding across the pond. 
<laughs> and their feet are going like crazy underneath. Yeah, that's a mark of how you know someone is playing well, if they're making it look easy. So Shane takes the lead for, I think, the first time this set. Yes, it is. And what a time to do it. And if he can go too clear now, he'll be clear favourite. He only has to win every other one. Hope you're enjoying our Railbirds coverage of the 2023 Derby City Classic. Lots of great matches, some one pocket for you as well. Go and like and subscribe to our page. It helps us bring you all this free pull. Oh, nearly scratched in the side. He's okay though. He's got a shot at the one, but it'll be a safe one. Yep, two balls in the break, wide open spread, but no shot at the one. He can see the one, yeah, but it's going to be a safety. Yeah, just really thin off this one ball. Move it as little as possible. Cue ball, round two rails. Down behind that wall of balls, three, the two, the nine. Maybe even get a better result. Oh, I seem trying to get a bit of head English on that one. Mm. Trying to coax the cue ball over. Would have loved to, a little flick off the five there would have been perfect. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't play it with a little bit of left hand English that shot just to swing it round two angles and be sure to get some cover. But was probably afraid of moving the one ball too much. Priority, yeah, most likely. get the ball safe. Yeah, Robbie playing a similar shot, but from distance. He's going to leave a, a shot. Decent effort. Yeah, he has left, left a shot. He's got a jack up, though. He might be able to go forward two rails. Oh, it looks straight to me, Kevin. I think he's doing your shot. Looks like he's drawing. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as you raise the butt of the cue, though, any little bit of English on that cue ball will make it swerve and miss its intended target. This needs a sweet stroke. Head still. Get a cue through. Oh, oh what no. a brilliant shot. He's hit it too well. Look at this. He's going to draw in off. And he's disgusted because I tell you, there's no worse feeling than when you over stroke a shot like that because it was so difficult and played it. I know it sounds strange, but he played it too well. Yep. Hit it too good. Nevertheless, a glorious shot. That was a great shot. Just overdid it. Ball in hand for Robbie. Wide open layout, just what he needed. Yeah, huge chance again to take the initiative.
That's perfect. Got nice angles. Come out for the eight. Yeah, usually very, very confident, but I'm sure the nerves are beginning to to jingle and jangle just a little bit at the moment. He's human after all. It doesn't matter how young or good you are. When that winning line approaches, and that's when you need to really, really control your emotions and stay loose, stay confident, focused. Just gone for the extension on his cue. He's a tall lad. I think he's over six foot. I think he's about six one. And with that hair, probably about six three. <laughs> oh, no. oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, the only thing is he's hit that so bad that he's hooked Shane Van Boning. He overcut that by two inches. Unbelievable. And I think it was just because he was stretching. Is there an edge there? Perhaps he's left an edge. It's mighty thin and he has to catch it mighty thin. What a shot to have to play. Just wondering, would he be tempted? I mean, going row first on this. And just flick off it. He looks like he might be tempted to tr uh, attempt kicking at this. But no, nah, he's thought better of that. He could play this row first. Oh, it's such a tough decision to make. In rack one or two, it's, you know, not really so important, but when you're 6-5 up in a race to nine, this is huge. His mind's made up. Wow, what a great shot. What a great shot he's played there. Tremendous. And I think Robbie just managed to tap the table there just a little bit. An appreciation. That was a real tough shot he played there. Now then he can go straight up and down here. He can get separation. Putting the eight on the top rail where the cue ball is on that rail in the middle. Or he can just go side to side. I think he's going up and down with the eight though. Oh, he's oh. gone for it. Oh, disaster. Wow. That is absolutely catastrophic. There is another little rule in the Derby City Classic where you're not allowed to concede any racks, but... Well, just disgusted with that. And I'm really surprised that he went for that, Kevin. He did have a couple of safety options there, maybe just a little bit petulant. Yeah, that was a super tough shot. Yeah, and could that be the one? I'm sure if he looked at that again, he wouldn't take it on. Got some nine ball movement. Yeah, and look at this. Got the shot on the one. Yeah, and the this... two and the three. So yep. just, that, that's the is that the three? Yeah, it's the three. Well, yeah. The only thing that looks like it could even be remotely an issue is that six eight at the far end of the table. 
And it doesn't even look like that much of an issue, really. Just had a look at it there on his way past. Didn't really pay too much attention to it, so it must be pretty straightforward. Yeah, it doesn't seem too concerned about it. Straightforward drawback. Yeah, and he's got room to work around the, the eight ball as well, the black eight. done again nice smooth draw don't overdo it though Shane like you did before no he's okay he's perfect not even straight on it oh it's been up and down this match Finally on the hill, Shane Van Boning against Robbie Capito. 8-5, Robbie now in big trouble. And it's so hard to have worked all day long. Time approaching probably 4.30 in the morning here in this particular match. And, wow, you've worked all day long. Yeah, For local nothing. time. Yeah, local time in the tournament uh, at this point of the match is actually after four thirty in the morning. Fatigue definitely a factor. And can't really, you know, criticize shot choice to such a horrendously long day of concentration, but it must hurt to go all that way and then you know we're in round 12 here I mean how many more rounds is there to go Kevin um, I'm not sure how many players are left at this point there can't be far to go though come through a long grueling time in this nine ball over 600 players in it Clever little shot there. He's on this two ball nicely. Yeah, he must be thinking, do I use the rail and come back over or can I just hold it? I think he can hold it okay. Yeah, at this point of the tournament, uh, players that are still in, in addition to uh, these two at the table, uh, Joshua Filler, Roland Garcia, Alex Pagelion, Fetter Gorst, uh, and that's it. Yeah, about six or eight people. Oh, and that was Joshua Filler that was playing Alex Peg Lion on that upper left table up there. And it looks like Joshua is out. Alex defeated Joshua Filler on that upper left table. So you can scratch Joshua off that list. And what did Shane just do? Whoopsie. Yeah, he's... Messed up there. Uh, thin off the right side of the four, cue ball to the far end of the table. Ooh, 
Is it going to leak out? Well, this is a chance. Especially at this stage of the game, you know, there comes a time where you do have to take on maybe a shot that you don't want to. He took on that eight ball in the last uh, rack. It doesn't look comfortable. Now this is a uh, should I, shan't I? He has got a safety on if he wants to thin off of it. If Looks you can like see enough of this. Yeah, if you can see enough of it, I think you got to shoot. Wow, well, long way off. The wheels have fallen off. That might be it. I don't like Robbie's chances of getting back to the table. Yeah, really didn't end up playing any shot there, Robbie, did he? You could tell he didn't like it. And I'm going to go back to that five ball where he was five two up with the chance to go six two up. And yeah, that's where another rack. Yeah, that's where everything changed. That's where the tide shifted. Yeah, it was that five ball that he left hanging in the corner pocket. And in it goes. Robbie is going out. Van Bonen yep. goes on. That does eliminate uh, Robbie from this tournament. So congratulations to Robbie Capito. He played a great tournament, just couldn't get past Shane Van Bonen. Shane will be moving on, and he'll be playing, I believe, Alex Pagalion next. Thank you guys for watching. I am uh, Kevin Ross along with Mark White. Be sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss any more matches. And we'll catch you guys in the, catch you guys in the next one. See you guys.